Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining. My name is Sophie Thomas um, and I am one of our trainee recruitment advisors at Linklaters. Um, I've been with the firm for uh, just over six years now, so quite a long time. Um, and um, I'm going to be delivering a workshop this morning on how to succeed on a vacation scheme. Um, so obviously well aware that at this time of year, you are all probably starting to to think about applying for vacation schemes. Um, some are obviously further away, so spring and summers, um, but a number of firms, including Linknators, um, also run a, a winter vacation scheme. And as we all know, VAC schemes are used by firms as a pipeline for their training contracts. Um, in fact, at, at Linklaters, these form a large proportion of our intake um, and there are training contract spaces available for all of our vacation scheme attendees. I therefore thought it would be useful to do a hopefully slightly different session from some of the others that you've had uh, over the last uh, uh, well, today and yesterday, um, and um, do a, a, a focus on um, how to succeed on a vacation scheme. Um, so being positive and thinking ahead to when hopefully um, you get one of those spaces. So the advice today is obviously going to be tailored towards a, a link later vac vacation scheme, but I'm going to do my best to try and make it as relevant as possible um, in terms of um, in terms of um, making it applicable to as, as many other firms um, as possible. I'd also want to add that some of the points might seem obvious, um, but on every scheme we do see the, the same mistakes or, or the same things happen. Um, so yeah, bear with me. Um, so what am I going to cover today? So um, I'm going to cover um, what a scheme structure is. I'm going to talk about preparation before you start a scheme. I'm uh, going to cover feedback and why feedback is so important. Uh, I'm going to talk about scheme assessments, do's and don'ts, and then hopefully have some questions at the end. Um, and I think someone from RMP is going to join. So in terms of a, a scheme uh, structure, I thought it would use, be useful just to cover what you might expect to, to experience on a vacation scheme. So at Linklaters, we have three vacation schemes running in each academic year. So we have winter, spring and summer. Other firms offer a variety of schemes and insight programs. For example, we also have a first year program called Pathfinder. So on our summer vacation scheme, it's four weeks long and you get to see two different practice areas, which is your choice. And then on our winter and spring vacation schemes, they are two weeks long with one seat. And, um, you know, in terms of which one you should apply for, it's, it's absolutely up to you. Um, I would encourage you to apply for what works best for you and your timetable um, and how long you feel you need at a firm to, to fully experience, um, you know, whether we're the right fit for you. Our vacation schemes are open to penultimate year students and beyond. Um, and as I mentioned, Pathfinder is open to first year students or second year students of a four year degree program. So on a VAC scheme, um, you'll be sat in a practice area with a principal. So a principal is a qualified associate um, and you will also be allocated a trainee buddy in that seat. Um, and they are really on hand to help answer any questions that you have. Um, in terms of the scheme itself, trainee recruitment organise a number of sessions um, for our back schemers. These include things like insights into different departments, uh, a client pitch uh, exercise, interactive sessions with our innovation team or L&D teams, etc. Uh, we also have lots of fun socials um, and where you get to meet lots of uh, trainees and, and partners and, and kind of good networking opportunities. In terms of the work you can expect, um, you will be asked to complete work for your principal um, and also your trainee buddy. Um, and we also um, allocate some assessed tasks to you, um, which I will come in onto in a bit with a little bit more information. Um, and then in terms of um, the training contract interview at the end of your scheme, so you are going to have a guaranteed interview with a, a partner and managing associate, which lasts around an hour at the end of the scheme. Um, and as I mentioned before, on our schemes, there is a, a training contract space for everyone. So then on to the next slide, um, which is on preparation. So 
it doesn't just start with day one of the scheme. There's plenty that you can be doing in the build up to uh, to attending your scheme. So one of the first things I would suggest is looking over your interview notes again um, and even, you know, application forms, CVs, covering letters, whatever the application process was for your scheme. Make sure you reread that. Um, you would have done loads of research um, into the firm for the assessment day. Um, so make sure you, you keep those notes. You don't chuck them away and, and think, thank goodness, I've, I've got that over and done with. Um, and then just reread them before the scheme starts and familiarize yourself with all of that information chances are that you know particularly if you have applied and, and been successful for a summer back scheme chances are you were interviewed back in January um, so that's quite a long time to, to go then seat allocation so I, I mentioned before um, so say in the summer um, you get to choose two different seats most schemes will ask you for your seat selection um, and I can imagine that seems quite daunting as, as to what you should pick um, typically at link Latest, we would ask you for four options we give you some information to help you with this so um, we provide a, a full list of seat options and then link through to uh, the client services section on our um, linklaters.com site uh, which has more information about each seat um, what I would encourage you to do when you're, you're trying to make those decisions is think about what you'd like to see, what areas do you think you might be interested in, and possibly where do you think you need to find out more about. So thinking back to your assessment day, was there any um, particular topics or themes that you struggled with? Um, anything that you felt actually that was my weakest area? Perhaps that should be a seat um, because, you know, that can help you in that final interview. Um, the, the point of the, the seats is to also help you for your training contract and, and picking your um, seats for your training contract. So it's a good, good opportunity to, to make some, some wise decisions um, before you start the scheme. So I'd also have put on the slide about um, firm website and social media. So in the build up to a scheme, I definitely recommend um, keeping an eye out on, on websites, social media, things in the news and just finding out what recent deals the firm have been working on. Chances are people in the office will be talking about them um, and it always looks good and, and makes a good impression to just be aware of the, the deal um, or some of the basic facts about it. Um, we often share these on social media as do Linklaters LLP on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is, is quickly growing um, and I definitely recommend following uh, firms on there as it's a good way to in a kind of easy way to, to see on the on the news feed um, what exactly firms have been up to. Um, and yeah, as I said before, keep up to date right up until um, you start the scheme. And, you know, if you have a particular area of interest, so technology or ESG, for example, um, do some research as there will always be plenty of opportunities for you to network with people at the firm um, during your time on the scheme, which is a great opportunity to further your knowledge. I'd also encourage you to try to identify gaps in your knowledge. So did something come up on your assessment day that you didn't understand? Uh, I would definitely recommend the day after any assessment day, um, take some time to reflect on that interview. Um, start with what did you think went well? What, would you, what were your strengths? And then what did you struggle with and why? Um, then before the scheme, reread over those notes and start thinking about um, what you can develop and, and how you can um, use the scheme to further your understanding on those points. Um, chances are, if you've identified it as a as an area of um, development, uh, the firm has as well, and and it could be something that is tested throughout the scheme or tested in that final interview. So then on to the next slide, um, which is all about feedback. So feedback is extremely important at Linklaters. We believe it is crucial to our people's development um, and we encourage continuous 360 degree feedback. So the responsibility is with everyone to give and request feedback. Um, and I would say it's definitely good to get into this habit early and as, as soon as you can. Um, I would say it's really important to ask for feedback at meaningful points. So allow time for reflection and a chance to work through any of the, the, the kind of the, the feedback. So after an assessment day, we will always give you a call, um, regardless of the outcome with feedback. If you're successful, uh, we will also talk you through the, the feedback again in the weeks leading up to your scheme. 
make sure you write that down. Um, and if another firm hasn't offered that, um, definitely ask. I'm sure they would be more than willing to, to do so. Throughout your time on the scheme, you should also ask for feedback from your principals and your trainee buddies, um, particularly after you've completed any substantial task for them. So make sure to think about when the appropriate time would be to ask for feedback and then also any questions you have about the task. So a couple of questions I think you might want to think about when um, asking for feedback, things like, did you understand the point of the exercise? Is it missing any technical knowledge that they wouldn't have expected you to know at this stage, but in future is something for you to be aware of? Um, anything you can go away now and, and work on to improve? Is there any further reading? Um, but also remember to focus on the positive as well. So, you know, what did you do well? Um, and then thinking about how you can use this to your advantage um, in your next seat or in your final interview. So then on to the next slide, which is all around scheme assessments. So in terms of um, tasks, so throughout your VAC scheme, um, you'll complete uh, a number of tasks. So in this, on our spring and winter schemes, you will have two tasks. And um, on our summer vacation schemes, you will be asked to complete three different tasks. Um, each task is different, as, as I said, and you'll each have, um, they'll each have a set deadline and timeline. Other firms might ask you to complete one longer project throughout the whole of, of your, um, your scheme or others might break it down like we have. Um, always ask to check exactly what is expected of you before you start the scheme. I really encourage you to plan your time carefully. Schemes are often really busy. Um, you, as I mentioned before, you've got lots of information sessions, principal work, tasks to complete and the socials. So make sure that you are communicating and letting your principal know what you're working on, um, when your deadlines are and also when your sessions will be. If you've arranged to go for a coffee or have a catch up with someone from a different department, also just make sure to let them know. It's not just about content as well when, you, when you're writing um, any, any written um, piece that you, you might be doing, whether that's on your assessment day um, for a VAC scheme. So we have a, a case study and we ask you to produce a written response for that or whether it's <clears throat> in that, um, you know, part of those assessed tasks on a scheme. So it's not just about, you know, the points that you've made, the, the you know, what you've got down on paper. You also need to think about your presentation and your structure, writing in a, a clear and concise way. Um, attention to detail is also obviously important, so make sure you proofread. Um, these are all elements that are assessed as well. And again, final point on, on tasks is to make use of internal resources as much as you can um, and definitely use your trainee buddy to um, get them to point you in the direction on any useful materials. So then in terms of the training contract interview, um, so in a similar way that a interview for a back scheme, you um, do the case study earlier in the day and then you discuss that in the final interview with a partner and managing associate. Um, you do something similar uh, on the VAC scheme. So um, this is based on the final task that you complete um, and then you discuss that in that interview. The training contract decision um, at Linklaters is made on three things um, following a scheme. So it's your performance in your final interview, um, it's your performance in the assessed tasks, and then it's also based on feedback from your principals in your seats. I'd really encourage you to make a note of what you've worked on throughout the scheme. Um, this can be brought up in your final interview um, and, you know, you're always going to get questions. What have you been up to on the scheme? What have you learned? And that's quite a good way, particularly on a summer back scheme where it's four weeks long. You know, by the time you've got to that last day on the four weeks, you've done so much. It's very difficult to remember what you did on day two or day three. <clears throat> and then finally on this slide, um, networking that's hugely important you might not get your first seat choice for your um your seat um but that's absolutely fine you can network and meet people from other seats go for coffees um help your understanding and and you know find out more and and that will hopefully help you when you're coming to making your seat decisions when when you join as a trainee 
So then on to the next slide, which is our Agile Mindset Framework. Um, so this is something that um, hopefully you might be familiar with, but if not, I would definitely encourage you to become familiar with it if you're thinking of applying to us. Um, you can see, um, see this uh, box on our career site. Um, so these are the, the skills and um, behaviours that we are looking for and assessing throughout all of our application stage. So from um, when you apply for a scheme or for a training contract, we're, we're assessing these things when you come through for any assessment day, but then also when you are on a scheme with us. Um, so bear that in mind um, throughout the whole process. So even on a scheme, for example, um, we ask you to um, complete a group client pitch exercise. So that is a great opportunity to demonstrate, you know, how well you work with others, that you work as one team, um, and also things like your interpersonal skills. Um, and then also in your final interview, um, your interviewers are going to expect you to have an expanded answer on why link laters and why commercial law. Um, that is something that you're always going to get asked in any interview you come through um, for at link laters. Um, but after spending two or four weeks with us, um, your interviewers are going to have some expectations that, that you'll have a, a reasonable, reasonably well researched answer for those. Um, and it's really important that you get across that, that motive motivation and enthusiasm. So then on to interview advice. So um, we, this is advice and, and for both, um, you know, any assessment day that you, you come through for, um, whether that's, you know, for a back scheme or for that final interview on a scheme. Um, so in terms of um, for your for that interview, think about what you have learnt whilst at Link Laters, um, and what the commercial work involves. Um, so you know, demonstrate all the research that you have done. So using examples of real deals, um, any work that you might have seen um, on the um, on the scheme as well. Anticipate common questions. So think about our criteria, as I, I showed you on the slide before, um, and what questions you could be asked. This is a, an important one and, and something that I think people often forget, particularly when they're nervous during an interview. Um, be, be really enthusiastic um, and, and, you know, trying to get across that, that motivation um, about link laters and the work we undertake. Um, that's something that, that often students aren't able to get across um, and it's really important. <clears throat> Don't be thrown off by any tricky questions. Um, think about it, give your opinion based on the, the facts as you understand them. Um, if you don't know, that's absolutely fine. Your interviewers aren't expecting you to have an answer for everything. Um, just be honest, um, ask for um, a bit more detail or a bit more information or try and apply your knowledge. So, you know, you might not know about that particular, um, you know, situation that they're referring to um, but you might be able to relate it to something else that you you do know about partners and, and interviewers are always impressed by people that are willing to have a go um, you know the interview is meant to be challenging they are looking to see how you think and, and how you work um, but they're not trying to, to catch you out or, or make life difficult for you um, and I'd also say that you should be prepared to deviate from answers that you may have prepared um, you might you know make a certain point um, and your interviewers then might flip it on its head and say okay well what about this turn it around and, and, you know, completely change what your, your, your thought process. Um, interviewers are looking for people who can be flexible um, and, and be prepared to dis discuss topics that you might not expect or you might not know much about. Um, I definitely see, say try not to over rehearse too much. Um, that's often, you know, um, I've, I've definitely made this mistake in the past for um, a competency based interview. I printed off loads, tried to come up with loads of different answers. Um, and that meant when the answers, the, the questions that I was asked weren't what I was expecting, I really struggled to think on my feet. Um, so definitely try to um, avoid doing that and, and being prepared to be flexible with, with the questions you might get asked. It is a conversation um, and you are just trying to build rapport, try to relax as much as possible. I know it's nerve wracking, um, but I think, you know, particularly later, no one's no one's trying to, um, you know, be difficult or, or ask really, really tricky questions, you know, from some kind of sick enjoyment or sick pleasure for themselves. It, it's definitely not that. So, um, yeah, try to relax as much as you possibly can. 
I'd also say be honest. Um, we don't have a set list of, you know, motivations for link Linklaters or motivations for commercial law. We just want to hear from you and, and your honest reasons. Um, and, and I think you can really get across your enthusiasm by, by doing that rather than listing off things that you, you think we or a partner might want to hear. Um, the next point is something that often um, or you often hear. So um, often partners will say, oh, the, the applicant was using a lot of uh, legal jargon and a lot of words. But as soon as I kind of dug a bit deeper, um, I could tell that they didn't have any understanding of what that meant. Um, feedback is often that they are much more impressed by someone who is describing something and they're actually describing a, a concept, a legal concept, but they had no idea that they were doing so. Um, and then questions at the end. So that is a big mistake that often people make. And I think it, it really shows a bit of research, a bit of enthusiasm. Um, and, and you've got to remember is it is a two way process. So you are looking um, to find out which firms are the right firms for you. Um, and you can only do that by talking to people, asking questions. Um, so, yeah, definitely, definitely think about some questions and, and who might be the appropriate person to ask that from. OK, and then on to top tips. So um, here I've got some listed on the slides, but I'll also talk about some others. Um, so during a scheme, your principal might be on a client call and might be really, really busy. Use the use your network. So reach out to your trainee buddy for for work. Um, ask around the department, um, you know, if anyone's got anything that you can you can help with. Again, that shows enthusiasm and, and enables you to network and, and get to know more people in the department. Um, but having said that, communication is really important. So perhaps you ask your trainee buddy and a, a couple of other associates in the group and they all give you something. So now you've got three pieces of work plus a task plus a social that night and you're suddenly thinking, oh, my goodness, what have I done? I, I'm never going to be able to finish it all. Um, and that's where communication is really important. Um, so let everyone know what your deadlines are, what you're working on um, and when you can get that, get, um, that piece of work back to them by. Uh, IT training, whilst boring, um, it's really important. So um, I've often had students miss important emails or diary invites um, just because I weren't quite sure how it works. So definitely pay uh, attention to that. Um, I've, I've got some other kind of do's on there, but in terms of, of don'ts, um, someone is late on every every single day obviously it can't be helped with traffic but just let us know um don't forget your important um essentials we actually can't let you in the building um on that first day if we um haven't got your passport and visa documents so don't forget those um personal phone so that's something that um often comes up and obviously sometimes it can't be avoided um but we you know we've had it on a, on occasion where um a vac schema is, is sat at their desk and a partner is just going to pop in to introduce themselves and you don't want that only interaction to to start with you having uh being checking your uh, instagram notifications um again um if there are any issues if you're worried about not having um received enough work or um you're, you're struggling with something always let trainee recruitment know because we, we can't do anything we can't help um if we aren't aware and then that moves me on to my final point which is uh super important is don't listen to the rumor mill um every scheme every year there's all kinds of wild rumors um they're definitely 99.9 percent .9 of the time fake news so um yeah don't don't worry about those um and and try to just block block them out and focus on, on what you're up to so Next slide, um, remember, as I mentioned before, it's very much a two-way process. Um, you are looking to find out if we are the right firm for you as much as we are, are looking to see if you're the right fit for us. And um, definitely get involved as much as you possibly can. Um, particularly when schemes are in the office, there's all kinds of opportunities. Um, on winter, there's always Christmas parties that, that the groups invite you to. Um, we've had of charity cricket matches in the summer with clients or um, you know getting to attend court um, so yeah ask if you can attend you can attend make a good impression and, and just let us know of your whereabouts uh, make sure you are really networking on the scheme it's a great opportunity to make friends um, ideally they'll be part of your future trainee cohort at the firm um, so amazing to go in knowing people already um, or at least they, they could be a contact at another firm 
remind yourself of our mindset framework that's really important and really try to make the most of your time in London in, in a great location uh, with lots of things going on. So next slide, um, obviously I've talked there and quite a few of the things I have made the assumption that it will be in person, which we are very much hopeful that all of our schemes will be. Um, but we are prepared to run um, schemes virtually if needs be. And we successfully ran three schemes over the summer um, virtually. So we have experience of that. Um, and if the situation requires it, you know, that will be absolutely fine. Um, obviously the safety of our people and our, our VAC scheme attendees is is needs to be prioritized um, but you know I've talked about enthusiasm and motivation quite a lot uh, this morning um, so think about how you can get that across in a virtual setting um, so you know that's asking questions you know whether you're attending a, uh, an overview session whether you're on a call with your buddies or your principals or you're in that interview setting um, you know you can always ask questions and that shows a genuine interest um, arrange regular catch-ups, speak to people, make sure you attend all of the sessions, be engaged. So you are obviously on your device a lot all of the day, but um, when attending sessions, uh, have your video on, make, you know, make the most of it, ask questions, take notes. Again, communication is key. Obviously, on a scheme, you know, you can see if someone's not at their desk, you can see it, you know, you can just say, oh, I'm off to, um, you know, the TMT IP overview session, I'll be back in an hour. Um, let your principal and your buddies know um, when you have sessions and when you're available. Um, and then, you know, there will be times of clashes. So, you know, you might might need to be late to a session because um, your principal's asked you to join a, a client call or, or something that would be super interesting. Just let us know. Um, Again, beforehand, give some time to think about who who you want to speak to, what you want to find out. Um, do you want to know more about our culture, our work, innovation, training? Um, arrange catch ups. Ask your principals and buddies to put you in touch with people. They'll be more than happy to do so. Be mindful of the time um, spent on your your laptop and devices. Obviously, it's quite a lot doing that all day, and it is really tiring. Um, so try to remember to take uh, regular breaks and switch off in the evening. Um, and then finally, take the time to network and build relationships, particularly with your fellow back schemers. Um, you know, none of our schemes are competitive, and you know you you are there to be a support to each other. So you know, there's always LinkedIn groups and WhatsApp groups, and and I think that's a, a great Great way to, to get to know people. And then on to the next slide, which just uh, covers our opportunities. And um, so um, our winter scheme has been open and it closes uh, on the 14th of October. Um, but then we also have, I've got the wrong dates on here, um, but um, our spring and summer vacation schemes and our training contracts um, have all opened today um, and they will be closing in December. So take a look at our website to find out all all of our, um, our, our different um, opportunities and, and the application dates. And then that leads on to um, the final slide, which was just around any questions. And I think someone will be joining. Hi, Lizzie. Hello, I've made it, hello. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, that was really, really interesting. Loads of great, great thoughts and great insights. And um, I've been monitoring all of the chat. So we've had probably about 25 questions. Wow, okay. <laughs> and, uh, lots of uh, great questions. So I've tried to distill them into a few topics um, and you've covered a few of them. So if I just get straight in there, so we've got yeah. about 15 minutes. Go for it. So the, the first one, so yeah, quite a few about the application. Um, dates and things. So um, if you, this is quite an interesting one, if you don't get a VAC scheme the first year you apply, can you apply the next year? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can apply um, once um, per kind of uh, academic year. So we obviously have our vacation schemes open now, you can apply then. Um, and um, if you're in successful, then yeah, absolutely, you can apply another year. Um, and um, if you apply for a VAC scheme in, in or winter when you're unsuccessful, we do reopen for our training contracts in a summer window and, and you can apply for that again as well. Excellent. And just following on from that, there's quite a few people who are asking around the best time to apply. Is there a, 
is there a best time or best window? <laughs> uh, so we don't recruit on a rolling basis. So what that means is we wait until all the deadlines have passed before making any decisions about who we're going to bring through to assessment days. So you don't need to rush and, and try and be the first person to apply. What I would say is, you know, find the best time for you to apply. So um, make sure you are ready. So um, in terms of getting that that application, um, we ask for a very, sh you know, a short form with basic basic details um, and then you take our online assessment um, and then once you've submitted both of those you have five days to take the Watson Glazer critical thinking test so I definitely say make sure you've practiced that Watson Glazer test that's the probably the only thing you can really prepare for in our application process so when you feel comfortable you feel like you're ready to you know perform well on that test that's when you should um, start to apply awesome Great, great answers. Um, and a specific one that I don't know if I missed, but I'm going to ask just in case. Um, can you apply for vaccine in the third year? Quite a few people. Yes. Are. Yeah, absolutely. So it's penultimate year and beyond. So that you can be a career changer, you could be a post grad, grad, whatever. But yeah, you just have to be um, in your penultimate year and beyond. Brilliant. Okay, so this question I loved actually. So um, it's when discussing business stories or deals in interviews or on the application form, how much depth do you think we should go into? Good question. So we don't um, ask any questions like that on our application form. I think people will hopefully be relieved to hear. Um, but I do know a number of firms do. Often there's, there's quite a strict word count with those those types of questions. Um, so I think, you know, they're looking more for understanding um, rather than just repeating the facts that you might have seen from a news article. Um, you, you often have a very short word count. So really get to the points that, you know, that the question's asking. Um, in terms of in in an interview situation um i think it's it's again more so that they're looking for your opinion and your thoughts on it um rather than just reciting you know anyone can kind of read a couple of articles and, and remember the facts um mm -hmm. it's then kind of showing that you understand that uh, you know how it plays a a larger part in in the economy or whatever it is in you know in that particular sector so it's all about taking it to that next step you know what might that mean for our clients what might that mean for our business and the work we do um you know if you were the ceo of that organization what would you be worried about what what concerns might you have um so yeah it's, it's all about taking it to that ne next level mm, and it sounds like it's how you apply it as well as opposed to just what it is how do you then yeah apply exactly. it exactly yeah 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 exactly Awesome. So this one is kind of linked to it, um, but it's around how can a non-law student be competitive in terms of case studies and analysis based um, interviews without the same experience? And if there's any resources that you advise that they use? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so what I would say is... Um, our case study and our assessment days are the same for law and non-law students. Um, our intake is about 40% non-law. So you're definitely, as a non-law student, you're definitely not in the minority there. Um, and what I would say is with that case study, um, and we, I covered it a little bit in, in my answer before, we're not testing on the law. We're not asking, you know, facts about black letter law or anything like that. It's very much a commercial interview. So it's very much understanding how a deal might work. Um, who are the main players? Who, who are the key players in, in any deal? How might, you know, it be financed if it's, a, it's a, an acquisition, for example? Um, so it, it's very much understanding that that business side of it. Um, and I think the, the best ways that you can do, you know, can go about, um, you know, developing that commercial understanding um, is find and, and pick sectors and deals that, that, that students are particularly passionate about that you find interesting, whether that's energy um, and renewables or it's retail, which, you know, there's so much on at the moment um, in terms of, of the retail sector. Um, and then closely following um, trends, stories, deals, you know, restructurings, insolvencies, whatever it might be, um, and, and following it, understanding it, developing a, an opinion on, on that. Um, and then you will be able to apply that knowledge to any situation in, in that interview. So um, I definitely encourage that. There's so many resources out there. There's 
podcasts which um, are great in terms of um, I think there's one called Finimize which um, shortens the daily news down to three minutes and you can just mm -hmm. listen to it as you wake up which is great um, there's things like um, I mean there's so many different kinds of, of podcasts a trainee once told me that they actually set BBC business as their internet homepage and I always love that tip because as soon as you come on you know the first thing you do when you open up your laptop is like check whatever it is that you, you'd like to check when you, when you turn it on. But if you have something there that's a prompt that makes you um, look at it and, and go, oh, that looks interesting, I'm going to read that, um, try and build it into your routine. You know, it only needs to be 10 minutes a day. Um, think how you like to work is it would you rather kind of look on LinkedIn so should you be following um certain things on LinkedIn or Twitter whatever it is um find what works for you but try and um, build that into your daily routine mm, I love that so passion be passionate about what it is and then build it into your your own schedule so you feel like you're just you're blending it into your world That's exactly really exactly good tips um okay so there's kind of the application ones then some really great questions by the way like the audience are on fire <laughs> so um this one's a really lovely one um it's how does link later's stand out in comparison to other magic circle law firms mm, good question so i would definitely say it there's kind of three ways in which i i think we we stand out um so first one I'll talk about is kind of culture. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning, I've been at the firm for six years. And um, one of the reasons I've stayed so long is, is definitely the people, um, all the, you know, the, the people that you work with, your, your team and immediate team, but also um, the wider people, you know, I'm always surprised and, and, you know, pleasantly surprised at the amount of time that others, you know, partners, trainees, associates are willing to give up to, you know, support graduate recruitment um, to you know help help you out and and I think that's that's amazing and I mean we have so many great initiatives um, and and different things that we do and um, but for me that's that's something that I'm always you know blown away by um, in terms of um, the, the second point I would say is the the training and development and support that's on offer um, the, the the training and development that I've received so you know from mentorship to all kinds of courses that you I mean I couldn't even name them all there's so many different things that we could get involved in um, but obviously for our lawyers that's you know just as great maybe even better so there's the um, you know training that you you get in your seat um, and then there's training not just for our trainees but all the way up to partner that's a it's a continuous learning cycle at, at the firm um, and that you know you obviously have a dedicated principal when you're a trainee um, but we recently launched a new initiative which sees a first seat trainee is paired up with a, a senior lawyer so that's a partner or a senior associate or counsel um, on that first seat um, mm -hmm. and they are there to be a completely kind of unbiased uh, mentor and contact throughout your your time at the firm um, to run ideas past and um, get career advice so um, yeah I would definitely say um, um, that's that's really great um, and then the final thing is just around innovation so um, I, I'm always impressed by um, not just kind of the innovative deals that we work on you know they're often first of their their kind you know we were the first to run a virtual trial during covid um you know we were often you know the first to do a, a certain type of of bond or or deal or listing on a stock exchange in a, in a particular jurisdiction um and you know that that always impresses me um but then you know it's it's the internal side as well so whether it's we're developing our own in-house ai platform called nakoda um or you know implementing ways of making work more efficient through automation in corporate yeah, yeah there's just so much going on um, and the firm is you know incredibly willing to embrace change so um, you know when it's an opportunity to be the first firm to launch a virtual internship um, it's mm -hmm. it's the easiest thing to just you know you we, someone came and pitched it we we said we really really want to do it um, and the firm supports us um, and, and gets things up and running or whether it's a trainee pitching to a senior partner saying I'd love to launch my own uh, podcast uh, series um, and the senior partner just being like absolutely um, I think that's a great idea let me know what I can do to help so yeah I think those are some of the, the things that I think differentiate us yeah they're brilliant I mean I'm sold I love <laughs> 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 um, and what's quite interesting we've actually got um on our on hopping which is our platform we've got a poll function and yeah. we actually asked a question earlier around um what are the most important factors 
um, for influencing you in deciding to apply for a, a job role and culture was coming out. It might have changed now, so anyone live can go on there. Um, but yeah, just what you were saying there about culture and, and one of those important things, it is so, so important. important. Yeah. You spend more time with the people you work with than your friends, your family, your partners. You know, that's a fact. You work, you, you know, we all work five days a week. So you've got to have people that you get on with and um, that are willing to support and that are at the top of the game and you feel like you're learning from. And um, I definitely uh, feel like I've experienced that here. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so we've got a couple more minutes for questions. So I'm just going to look. We've had a flurry on the, on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a really, really nice one here around... Um, if there's anything else to add to what you've just said around Linklater's core values, uh, what are they? Um, oh, yeah. So we, we've got a, a few core values. So um, there, there's kind of um, acting with integrity, respecting each other, being leaders. Um, there is, I can't remember all of them, but I think what we have done in terms of the Agile Mindset Framework is compiled a list of skills and attributes that we are looking for from our future trainees and that we think um, our future trainees need to be a, a successful uh, lawyer of the future and then also um, combine that with the firm's internal values and, and culture and things that we are trying to instill in our people so um, I think that's that's the the where that agile mindset frameworks come from so it's a great way to to have a look um go and have a, a look at that framework because that's all the the skills and attributes and and our values that we're looking for mm. and i remember in your slide it was the pink boxes yes yes that yeah. bright magenta box that we love so much <laughs> love it we love pink <laughs> yes i mean yeah you can't you can't join link Laters and not like pink <laughs> Oh, excellent. Um, and then let's just see if there's any more that we've had in here. So um, we've had about top tips. Oh, yeah, a big one, I guess, is obviously this, the world has changed quite a bit and we've mentioned um, virtual. And a few students were asking around, is it going to be a virtual sort of winter VAT scheme or, or yeah, how, how are you planning to, to roll, roll that one out? <laughs> yeah, so um, we haven't made a confirmed decision as to what will happen with um, the winter VAT scheme. We really want our all of our schemes and all of our assessment days um to be in person as you know even that you know we we've run successful um virtual back schemes and and they've gone really really well we do acknowledge that you know face to face is is the preferred option um so we are hopeful that we'll be able to run them all in person um we haven't made a confirmed decision on winter um but if we need to we can absolutely run that in, in a virtual way um but we are, are waiting to see how the situation unfolds as to, to whether it will be virtual or um it will be in person um and with the assessment days obviously the the bulk of those happen in january and february um fingers crossed we can do them all in person as we normally would but again we've we've run numerous assessment days um on online as well so um we're, we're definitely prepared if if not excellent yeah it's one of those things that you just have to go with the times don't you? you just try as much as possible <laughs> exactly exactly and we, we don't want to make a decision too early and mm. things change and we could have done it in person um so yeah it's, it's a bit of a wait and see for us but um yeah we're we're confident either way Excellent. Um, okay, so I mean there's a few more specific ones um, I'll just have a little read here so um, I mean, this is quite an interesting one based on the pink boxes we were just talking about. Someone just said, from the Agile framework, which qualities would you say are most important? <laughs> um, I hate to be that person, but they are all equally important. <laughs> um, I say throughout all of our application processes, they are t all tested and they were all tested more than once. So whether that's through the CAP assessment, that's through the Watson Glazer, that's through the, the interviews. Um, so they are all equally as important, I'm, I'm afraid to say. Um, definitely before you're coming in for an assessment day, um, think about which ones you're likely to be tested on and asked in you know HR interview and then in that part or managing associate interview there's definitely some some themes and, and groupings that you can do um so yeah but um unfortunately they are all important <laughs> <laughs> there we go there, there's the answer oh <laughs> um, 
Well, I think we are literally just out of time. So thank you so much for all those amazing answers and all of your insights, Sophie, that's brilliant. And um, thank you to everyone for your questions in the chat. So I know we haven't got through all of them. Um, but what I suggest is if you head over to Link Later's booth, then um, yeah, you'll be able to answer some some more on there. So yeah, um, I'm heading yeah. there now. So yeah, if um, anyone didn't get any uh, questions asked, I'm, I'll be there in about five minutes. Um, <laughs> so come and ask me then. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Well, thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. And speak to you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.